This is Trends and Twirls, my favourite video show. I say that not to put any pressure on somebody who's never done it before, but just to tell you, up until you, it has been my favourite part of the show. So if you mess it up and it no longer is their favourite part of my show, you will never be invited onto the show again. <laughs> no uh, it is a section all about what people are doing, talking about, thinking in our great city. So part of it uh, is to do with, I don't know, what's big on social media, what's big in your local paper. I get 10 points uh, from anybody in industrial action at BBC Radio London. Any time I mention the word local, I get points. Uh, and uh, also, uh, what's big for you in terms of what's important? Today, uh, we have somebody who comes recommended. Mm. It comes recommended by the Northerner who used to be on this show. Uh, his name is Paul. Uh, Paul uh, said, Ed, you got to win whatever that Northern accent is. is, uh, is he, you got to get her on. So we've done it. Martha Lewis, part of an award-winning uh, music and comedy duo, formerly known as Donna and Kebab. See what they've done there. And has just returned uh, from Edinburgh, as in the Fringe Festival. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to the mid-morning show. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. What was it like? I, 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 I've only done it once, and I've always... It's on my bucket list for something I have to do again. When? And what I, did, I did it in uh, 91, 90. As a performer? Yes. Or as a How dare you? As a performer. How else would I yeah, do it? Yeah, no, I did. I, you, know, you know, I know what that yeah, question yeah. means. How right. else would I do it? What, what, what am I, cleaning the Wonderful. streets or no, what? No, no, as a punter. Well, so many people, thousands of millions. Actually, you're right. But that's a long way to go. When people go up there as pundits, I'm like, whoa, you got a job. Have you got to, Unless you're looking for talent or something like that. A, ten hours it took me in the minibus to drive up there. In the minibus, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, that's how long it takes. Four hours by by train, I'm uh, told. Yeah, but uh, then and they, about half an hour by plane. Them days I didn't have any money. No, so no, I just no. got up there any way I could. Right. But you but clearly got money. First time we went up in Ed, uh, to Edinburgh in 1987, the car broke down on the way and it ended up what was going to be an eight, eight and a half hour ride was ended up being something like 15 hours on the back it's, of AA it's, truck. It's a chapter in the book, yeah, Martha. It, All of those it, things. It, I it, bet it, you had some lovely experiences, languages, wonderful. using the toilet, finding somewhere to eat, making <laughs> new friends it's all brilliant isn't it that's part of the experience it, it really is a huge buzz i was trying to do some um research on how many people how many shows were around in 1987 i actually couldn't find the statistic for that the closest i found was in 1996 there was something like 1300 shows this year the one that we've just come back to, From we did a 10-day stint uh, as Donna and Kebab are Martha and Eve with my brilliant partner Eve Polikarpu. We w the sh we had th th there were 3,900 shows, so it's grown so much since 1987. I don't know how people even choose what they're what they're going to see. Well, how do they how do they do? I mean, for those people who have never been to Edinburgh, I know this is not what you came out to talk about, but 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 it is part of what it is. For people who have never been up before, I mean, there are literally shows everywhere at all times. Everywhere. When we first went up in 1987, we were in a, a tiny shoebox of a room, literally fitting 30 people or something like that, and, and our career grew from there. The reason why people take the punt and go and perform in a barbershop or in a cafe or wherever there is space, and even when there isn't space, they perform. The reason they do that is because it's literally where you get picked up. It's literally where you get seen. It's your first stage. It can be your first stage, of course. It can be also for established performers, but the reason why people take that punt is because so many people are more likely to see you, and and it, it you know we can we can list a who's who of comedy and theatre people who has started from the Edinburgh Festival, and it, it's it's just one of those incredibly vibrant. It's the biggest arts and culture festival in the world. It's it's amazing to me that we haven't tried to. I mean, we nick everything here in London that we haven't actually tried. I mean, uh, uh, to, to to replicate it across the whole of London. I know you got. 
stuff in Camden, haven't Camden you? Have, you? have you done that? Oh, yes, yes, done that over the years, yes. There are so many different, and there's uh, Brighton Fringe Festival, there's all kinds of fringe festivals, but there's no, nothing, no, no, like, that's, that's the, nothing like this. This is this is huge beyond, beyond. Uh, I think... Would you advise people listening to this? So there are people who make beats, there are people who, uh, I don't know, do comedy, there are people who sing, there are people out there who like looking at things, who you like traveling would yeah. you is it something you'd advocate definitely uh, i think definitely because apart from anything else the the nowadays to get to perform night after night is where you really hone your craft it's really where you learn how you you shape a show by doing things night after night why are you nodding are uh, you be, because i envy you I mean, I'm, I'm going to see a play straight after work today, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going down to Jewelry Lane. I've been because of the time that I work to do it. It's, that's that's really what I do. That's really what I am. Great. I miss it. I envy you, you so much. Did you enjoy it this year? I I really loved it, but I loved it from the perspective of we wrote a show that was meant to be celebrating our 35 years of creative partnership and what we found. Well, in did you start when you were two? We yeah, exactly. I, I no four actually. Um, <laughs> so we, you know, what what I really enjoyed about this this show was that we were telling our story and it's part of a bigger picture which is a documentary and it's a, a, tour, a full length tour next year a, a full length show rather so in Edinburgh you get to do one hour snapshot of your yeah, show and then the changeover is quite quick isn't it changeover is 15 minutes it's, 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 it's completely it's the most stressful 15 is, minutes of your life it is and it then is. the audience are in they've no got complicated set no no, but, you know, you can strip down and strip down, but, you know, we, we do drums, we do guitars, we do voices, we what, do comedy, what's we do your, What's your heritage? British-born Cypriot. BBC. That's why the, I'm at home here, BBC. Well, BBC I'm means BBC. something different in Hackney, but I don't think I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to guess. I'll leave, that, I'll leave that one dangling. Yeah, well, right probably just just as well. <laughs> right. Well, we, get, we prove that you can talk. I didn't have any doubt about that. <laughs> Paul wouldn't recommend anybody for this. He didn't have slightly uh, a dodgy sense of humour, but the ability to talk. Martha, thanks for coming in. What's your first story? My first story. Well, I was. You said that you wanted a local story, and I'm really gripped by this this new book that's coming out. It's not actually out yet. It's out in the middle of September. It's called Shopping Lists, and it's a book that began as an art exhibition in 2017, and it's literally somebody who has collected shopping lists from the same North London in Holloway. I won't mention the the store, the grocery store, the huge grocery store on Holloway Road. And I somebody, knew, I know what it is. You do know what it is. Yeah, but I know what yeah. it is. I knew what it was before Ella shouted it in right. my ear. I, I tell you for why. why, because this is the kind of high art, rich people nonsense. Yes, but it is. It, it, it is. It is. It is nonsense. Wait, but. Well, it is, but, well, it could be, but it also could be something else. I'm not going to confirm or deny, but the thing is about this story, I find it absolutely gripping that somebody has collected, if you can visualise 20, let's say, okay. 20 shopping lists, okay. right, written in different handwriting, before we even get to the content of what's on the shopping list, we're talking about the paper that's used. How much can you tell by the paper? Is it on the back you of an envelope? Are is it sad. Back of... You no, are a no, sad. No, no, this is a brilliant human story. Being. No, it's not. It's fascinating. And and I've got to tell you, the, the one thing that drew me to this story was the picture in the paper of of the storyboard that she had in in her art exhibition. And there was this little tiny strip uh, written in Greek handwriting, just like my mum's handwriting and it was written on the back of a Kleenex box. So my mum, when I was growing up, she used to cut the cornflake boxes and the Kleenex boxes. She used to cut them in strips ready for her shopping list. And I thought, oh my God, is this a Greek thing? Is this a national trait? So you could I, relate. I could totally relate to this shopping list. Fantastic. But, yeah, but the thing is, Eddie, you don't know. You know, is somebody... You, know, you can... I don't know. Can you tell somebody's heritage? Can you tell somebody's yeah, class? You can. can you tell yes, somebody you can. how? I mean, I, I'll tell you. You know the brilliant. Apart from the fact that, by the way, my mum cut toothpaste because what? yeah, my because says, there's so much more. Because there's so much more when you stick the brush in, right? Yeah. So talking about things that we yeah. cut up, right? Yeah. I, I, I would absolutely happily go week by week using different people's shopping lists to see how I could live. I think that would be fantastic. 
it's an experiment. Just think about that. Just think it's about that experiment. As, a, as a social on, experiment. On, on some of these, it's interesting because on some of these, I wrote down some of the things that... It, Leave off we, the vegan ones. No, I don't, I yeah, don't want the vegan well, I don't want the vegan Well, that's, well, vegan well, that's the thing. Well, like Waitrose, no. vegan is high up. No, high no, up. no. Like, can I say it's I'm Waitrose? I'm not having the vegan option. So, if I said to you, oven chips, chicken nuggets, bottles of Coke... Kids. Would youngsters. You? Kids. Would you? If kids. I said fish kids. pie, rocket, prawns, treacle... What would you say? What would you say to Dorito? Uh, I'm a pie. single woman, mid-30s. Swordfish, ice cream, grapes, organic apples. Somebody's going through a transition. <laughs> kind of moving to working out what, who they are, what they want to do. Exactly Swordfish. why this book is so... I'm just, is, I can't wait. Is. I can't have, wait for this have you book. Were, have I'm, you done that? Then? Yeah, you I know. Just put me on this book. Have you looked at it and worked it out? Because it's I'm, the kind of nonsense I love. It's the kind of thing that you, you, you that novels are made of, isn't it? Then stories and films are made of. You, you build that up behind, yeah. and see what one person does I'm with that list. I'm absolutely sure that this person. is going to... This, this woman, This uh, her name is Ingrid Swenson, by the way, and the book is called Shopping Lists. And I'm absolutely <laughs> sure she's sold the rights already to I film think, because it's I a fantastic so. film. I think it's a great idea because it's nonsense. Isn't it? it is nonsense. Though, isn't right? It? right, give me another one, please. Well, we did Edinburgh. Did we do Edinburgh Festival? We've covered that, haven't we? Oh, it's all. I mean, we'll, we'll end with that because we'll end with... We're, Donna and Kebab again. Oh, we're ending with Donna and Kebab again. Sheesh. And the other story that I wanted to talk about was uh, a story that's close to me is how many... Um, okay, so I'm a songwriter in my life, in my normal day-to-day -day job. I'm a songwriter um, and I released an album last year uh, uh, um, which was full of social commentary and one of the, the subjects on there was the impact of AI. And that particular song, The AI Man, was... Um, motivated by my father-in-law, the very sad story of my father-in-law, my late father-in-law now, um, who couldn't park in his local car park anymore because he didn't have a smartphone. So we know this. We are leaving so many people out of the picture. He was parking in that car park for 35 years and suddenly he's out. Suddenly he's out there. He's, he's on his own. And how much AI influences for the you know, to the detriment of, of, of people being more and more isolated. Now, the flip side of that story is at the same time, my mum, literally three days ago, who lives in Cyprus, um, who came over here, brought us all, at, well, she came over here in the 60s, um, had her family, went back to Cyprus to retire. She has just discovered a new Facebook page which talks about her old experiences in Larnaca, um, and it's called Larnaca Flashbacks. She's just discovered a Facebook page. So her whole world has opened up beyond imagination. She's suddenly reconnecting with friends. And we know about this, Friends Reunited. We've known about that for years. But for her generation at 81 to be on Facebook and to be writing her stories, these are fascinating stories about her history, which I think are so valuable to me, to my generation and the generation you know that generations that are coming up and I, I feel that it's such a she's such a she's always been a bit of a trailblazer my mum and the fact that she's writing these stories and it's a really important part of 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 archiving history there's a lot there mm -hmm. right which is kind of like your personality is like your hair isn't it it's kind of <laughs> there's a lot of it and there's a lot going on right but but have you asked her have you I said, Mum, how did you get to the country? Mum, how was it to leave us uh, in England? Mum, Mum, you know, uh, you and Dad, how did you, what did you, where did you, what were your dreams? What did you used to wear? What were your, uh, have you asked her? You won't remember me, but about a year ago, I phoned in to your programme where you were talking about, do you feel British or do you feel the country of your parents? Oh, the Tebbit te 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 test. The what? It, it, the, we call it, the, in sport, it's called the Tebbit test. What's the Tebbit so, test? So the Tebbit test is that Cyprus yeah. are playing football against England. Who, yeah. Who do you support? Who do you support? I know. And you support really... Cyprus, don't you? I have to. Yeah, you failed the Tebbit test. I, I, I have to. No, I succeeded if you're Cypriot. So, yeah, it right. depends where your perspective is, doesn't right. it? But but it, it's you, you did a program recently and I phoned in and we talked about, I'd just come back from Cyprus and my mum was kind of going through that phase because she's just hit 80 and she's going through that phase of shedding a lot of her stuff and she's getting rid of photographs she's getting rid of she's preparing she's not ill but she's preparing you know she wants to 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 declutter she wants a, a strip down home uh, and oh, we, we talked she? about this oh yeah now i remember you no i don't want her to do that 
I don't want her to do that. I don't want her to do that. You're gonna, you, you, you've come here to try and make me cry, haven't you? No, no. My dad, I still, uh, he died in 2005. I still haven't gone through three of his bags. Oh, really? I can't, it's, it's one of the most painful shows I do. You do a show, right? And, 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 yeah. and, and, and Ola's old, so he'll know, our studio manager. Your parent or somebody you love dies, and you have to go through their room. You have to go through their stuff. stuff. Oh, man, you don't know that kind of pain, man. That's horrible. That's, that's so maybe she's one. trying to save you, that. She, I, th I think she is, and I've heard that from other people whose, whose stories, are, you know, whose parents have passed away, where they had the luxury of time they knew ahead, yeah. and, they, and they knew that their, you know, their demise... Go up and often to visit her. Yes. She I has a lot to... I'm, I'm one of these fortune tellers. I can tell she has much to tell you. She has. She has. Why is that making you sad? No, it's a. It's. I'm going as often as I can now because before I think I used to just go a couple of times a year to visit them. Um, I'm. I'm lucky enough to have both my parents alive, and and, I, and now I'm making it. Uh, it's four times. You don't, a don't year. go there and be miserable. No, go there and I'm going to enjoy. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to enjoy. Yeah, exactly. oh, Mum, I love when you make this. So oh, it makes yeah. me feel like. Yeah. A, what's, what food did she used to make? What oh. would definitely have been on that list? Right. So there's a dish that is called macaronia do forno, which is uh, like a lasagna, the Greek version of lasagna, uh -huh. if you like, like pasticcio, I think they call it in Greece, or moussaka, that kind of thing. And it, that's that's my absolute favourite. And oh, that's your that's your yeah, your mum yeah, your mum showing you that she loves you. That's that's yeah, what she cooks for you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, as they get older, it's a very it's a hard that's a that's a difficult dish to make. That's it requires a lot of standing time. Well, that's what. So my mum is born nineteen forty two. So it would be exactly around the right. same, right? Exactly the same. So mum's born in forty two, and, and it, 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 literally we watch mum cook in the kitchen on Sunday when she's in this country. Yeah, and she's leaning on the side. Yeah. To, she can't do it anymore. Yeah. She can't do that yeah. kind of that kind all of heavy day juice, yeah. heavy duty. Yeah, yeah. so, so we yeah. try to eat out yeah, now. Yeah. We try yeah. to do. That uh, happens. I, I, I experimented with some salmon the other day. <laughs> Was it good? I liked it. <laughs> Did anything else like it? I don't, no, I don't care. No, I, you I, like I, it. I like it. Did your mum like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's all. But, but, but going back to the nub of your story, which yeah. is about, I suppose how technology impacts other people that telephone thing because you can't but you're right unless you're you got the app the ringo app or whatever it might be it's really hard to part and nevertheless the, you you presented the other side to it which is how it's making mum's life much more present well when 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 i first submitted this it was all about the ai and how how we are leaving that uh, a part of society out and it's not just the elderly it's the people who can't actually yes. deal with smartphones yes. so yes. you know yes. there's a lot of people around we can't check it feels like unless you're one of the fittest you're not going to be so I think that's, this the, word, that's that, the way it's going. We had a call from a guy called George, uh, which has impacted all of us in terms of ULES is coming yeah, in I, Tuesday. I, I was listening. And, you know, it's just like, well, what, I've got is this letter. And I don't, no, Tuesday, next Tuesday. And, uh, and that was really difficult. Um, what, how do you know Paul, then? Uh, Paul Hilton, um, I was introduced to him. He came to see a show of mine, and he actually came to see the Don and Kebab preview show. Did he make in... a mess on the seat or something? No. <laughs> Why would he do that? Well, he's Why dodgy. Is he he's messy? a dodgy guy. He's a, he's a wonderful guy. <laughs> he's a dodgy he, guy. He, he, he you said don't he, know him like me. He said he hadn't seen Don and Kebab the first time round in 87, and he came to see us then. That's why he, he recommended this. He's a lovely guy. Really beautiful man. You're a lovely lady. Thank, Thank you for you coming. Much. What, what's the future for Dodo and Kebab? Where, where can people um, see you? Well, we're doing. We're doing. The, the whole reason of doing this Edinburgh Festival was that somebody has has popped up another BBC British-born Cypriot. Let's say, not your BBC type version, but an, another British-born <laughs> Cypriot. Do you know what the other version is? No, no I'm not even going to go there. Not yet. <laughs> not until Ella, we're don't get there. nervous, Ella. Well, what? Ella, our producer, very nervous. Behind not until it. we're She's going there. red. I didn't even know you knew about. I'm finding out more about you from what I don't say. Look, can you see how red she's yeah. got? Uh huh. Uh huh. She is. She's. Actually have you ever good. experienced a? No. All right. Let's go. What? 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 What, what have you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, what? Stop, because we've got to take this seriously. Right, I'm serious. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, 
I don't even know what the question is, but we've got to try and clean it up somehow. <laughs> right. Where can Where? people catch right. Donna and Kabir? Right. So next year, the whole part of doing this was to do a, a snapshot of the full-length show, which is going to be touring next year, and the Donna and Kebab um, documentary, which is coming up. Another British-born Cypriot has emerged and said, I need to capture your story because it's of major importance. So anyway, so that's the documentary coming up. I'm also doing London Jazz Festival as a solo artist in November um, uh, at the Crazy Cox and Piccadilly. So if you're around, come to that. You got a website or something that people can catch you on? MarthaLewis.co.uk. Say it again. MarthaLewis.co.uk. Say my name. Say my name. MarthaLewis.co.uk. And all the, um, you know, Instagram things. I don't know them. You were every bit as awful as you said you would be, by the way. Good. And I'm you, glad. And you I'm will. glad I lived up to the awful reputation. And you will definitely be back. Give give my love to mum. British-born Cypriot. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> And give, you give your love to my mum. Her name is Margarita. Go on, give a shout out. Margarita, uh, I, I've met your your B, BBC daughter. BBC Radio Live. I've got World Cup for you, obviously. So I've been.